21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one And we can make a difference, yeah we can Yeah we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show. And today I have with me Nikolai. Nikolai, how are you today? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great, thank you. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yes. I remember I got tuned into you in the first place because I saw you posting these pictures of amazing devices that you were making and I thought ooh he's really scientific and he has kind of this knack for making these things and this feel for it and um, I like to call a lot of the younger generation star seeds which means they've actually come in with more parts of their brain turned on and they actually already know naturally how to use tools that we're just maybe moving into because they've come here to be bearers of the future so I'd put you in that category for sure. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks, Gary. So when I Thank started, you for the lovely introduction. It's good and, yeah. and wonderful to to chat with you here today. We've been talking yes. a little bit in the background, so it's good to have a uh, have the communication lines open and to be able to share this with everyone. Very cool. And um, we are going to be talking today about what the Cash Foundation has been teaching as the One Cup of Life. Um, we are both knowledge seekers which means we've been students of knowledge seekers workshops that have been openly broadcast on youtube for really the last five years but with the covid 19 or the coronavirus whatever we want to call it there's been some really great plasma technology that has come forward to help people create protective environments in their homes to help create a, a natural immune condition in the body to help balance the body's fields so that it can be strong and not have a virus inhabit it um, so we can clean up the areas around us do you want to talk a little bit about that nikolai about how you're yeah, yeah, you're totally. kind of being around this teaching and what it's opened up for you yeah absolutely um yeah so the 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 first cup of life had um, been opened up around i think it was some towards the end of January. And that was in response to the outbreak happening in, uh, in China. Now at the time we were, uh, we were kind of taught how to build the cup of life and, uh, and what to do to, to, to begin. And at the time it still seemed really far away. Um, you know, China is a place we don't hear a lot of really good information out of sometimes. So it was hard to put these uh, conflicting um, news perspectives into, uh, into view. But um, essentially, when we uh, really understood how, how real this virus is and how it is kind of uh, affecting many people, um, it mobilized a lot of the knowledge seekers to begin to create these cups. And uh, you had a bit of a renaissance <clears throat> in a way which was last uh, happening in the Keshe Foundation around the time of the uh, Magrav units being created. And so there's been a huge production of um, of kits, of, uh, of GANs in people's homes, of knowledge being spread, of uh, videos being shared um, from all over. So it's been really uh, exciting time to be back doing this. And uh, it's got a, it brought a purpose back, which um, I think was lacking for several, several years in my understanding, which was that a lot of people were making things, but they didn't know why or what the GANs that they were making could be used for. And now finally we have a real, uh, a rallying cry to, to work around. So one that's thing I really wonderful. Yeah, one of the things I've really liked the way um, Mr. Cash has presented his materials is um, every once in a while when there's a really big movement forward, they've come out with a blueprint. And there was the mm -hmm. Magrav blueprint, which was when I got involved in 2015. There was a spaceship blueprint. And then just a few weeks ago, they did the coronavirus blueprint, which was great because um, it was 
practical ways to apply these tools and this technology for a particular use in the world, which is what you just said. And I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, developing the protocol became um, really important um, as that was kind of the first step that everybody had to, to understand was, you know, beyond creating the GANs, which most of us in the, in the knowledge seeker base had had an understanding about, but it was, you know, two years old. It was based on uh, videos that we had watched a long time ago. And so it kind of brought this new idea around where we had to begin to use glass instead of plastic for our containers because they had uh, different properties that the plastic um, could contain a different kind of energy, one that would uh, negatively impact the GANs that we're creating, um, such that it could cause a um, uh, it could cause a, an energetic exchange to occur between the virus and the CH bond, which is the energy bond that exists in the plastics. And so that was causing um, the GANs to actually feed the virus rather than deplete it of its energy. And so there was lots of lessons that, that got kind of adjusted in the first few weeks of, uh, of, the, of the One Cup, One Life being shown. And it progressed um, further. So we have a second cup of life that's been introduced. And um, the first cup of life talks about a connection to the white, um, white tissues of the body. So that would be our lungs and our brain tissue for the most part. Um, the second cup of life was created to target the red muscles tissue uh, mutation of the virus, which was occurring um, in Iran in very, very serious uh, cases in Iran. Um, many people were in excruciating pain and uh, it was clear that the virus had mutated and changed. And so the second variation of the cup of life was created to uh, alleviate that. And um, so then I began to work with those two cups and create um, a number of them around my house. And I know carrie has got a whole bunch of pictures, but maybe we'll wait for a moment to jump into those and then we can uh, talk some more. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's been the process so far. That's great. And um, I would just like to reiterate here, we'll have a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, but just to reiterate, we are not here to diagnose or cure. We're here just to educate on some materials that can be created to help rebalance the energy fields of the body. And as they the body rebalances its own energy fields, um, there's, there can be a wellness that takes place. So um, yeah, exactly. That's very important to make clear. We're not talking about cures in any way, respect, or um, that, that word has been weaponized very much in the Western uh, society. So uh, when we're talking about plasma terms, we talk about processing. We talk about the release and the exchange of the energy. And that is something that is not, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, we can exchange energy with plants. We can hug trees. We can meditate under the sun, under the stars. You know, there's many ways that we can use to increase our vitality and our energy fields from the natural world. And um, this is just an extension of that in a way. But it's an extension of that with a very specific intent and uh, through the very specific intent of what we are trying to create and the conditions that we are creating, uh, we can uh, influence the world around us and our environment. Beautiful and well said. So, Nikolai, should we take a look at some of the pictures of the sure. um, your yeah, experiments with making this um, this GANs or this, um, are you calling it GANs? Calling it it the is, one it is still of GANs, of course. Yeah, it is a GANs. Um, we are being more specific in terms of describing which one they are. Uh, in the olden times, so to speak, we had four basic GANs types uh, that we were working with. Uh, CO2, zinc, uh, CH3, and CuO. And in this uh, variation, we are not talking about so much of the other ones anymore. And we're just talking about these uh, one cup, one life GANSes because the other ones were made for different purposes. And I would just want to bring up one point here for all those knowledge seekers who are out there who have made GANSes. Um, we are requesting, and this has been requested by the foundation, that if anyone has made CH3 GANs, and you know what that is, uh, it is best to dispose of it at this time uh, because it can feed the virus in your body and in the bodies of those around you, um, and in plants and animals just the same. So the, the easiest way to get rid of it is actually to uh, dispose of it down the toilet, and it's uh, very important to, uh, to do so and rinse it down. Um, essentially, it's gonna do a lot more in the, uh, 
in the production facilities of uh, down the pipe, so to speak, than it will in your uh, environment. And um, that's just something I wanted to bring up. Cool. Thank you for bringing that up. And it's interesting too to me because um, originally we were consuming the water off the top of the GANs and then we were not consuming the water off the top of the GANs. And now it seems like, again, um, the suggestion is to consume the water off the top of the GANs. Oh, okay. Why is did that you correct? stop? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Oh, um, it was that... the instructions of the foundation, basically. Oh, the things they just, okay. Yeah, so... Um, it's been this... the kind of wave pattern that we've gone through. Right, right. Yeah. Um, as I've understood it, and I, I too was in a position where um, when I first began, I was very excited about everything and wanted to explore it. Um, and it was kind of very much in a world of, um, it was like a playground. So we were, we were told, you know, here's the, the ground rules, so to speak, but uh, go have fun. And um, after the virus came to be, um, it became apparent that this, this was no longer the time to be um, experimenting when we didn't know. Um, and so that, that shifted things a little bit for me um, because I had a number of experiments around the house that I didn't have a clear um, understanding what they were for. I was kind of mm -hmm. following intuition. And I, it, it took a few weeks to really come to terms with the idea that I had to re really remove all of that and focus upon this one task at hand. And, um, and that became really the focus. So that was good. Cool. Well, this is a beautiful, we're, we're calling this the one cup of life, right? Yeah, this is the first cup of life. So this has got uh, a zinc plate on the right hand side, um, a nano coated copper coil in the middle, and then a regular copper coil on the left. Beautiful. And then the way that we'll look a minute at the way they're wired together. But um, do you want to talk really quickly about what the nano coated copper is? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so the nano coating on the copper in this case was achieved by uh, caustic nano coating. Now, this is a process that is done in um, you'll take a you'll take a, a wound copper wire in this case, the spring in the middle. Uh, submerge it into a hot caustic solution. Uh, what I usually do is I put it in a plastic container, uh, put the caustic on the bottom of it, lay the coils down inside, and then pour boiling water over the top until they completely cover all of the copper. Uh, usually I'll wait about 24 hours, sometimes 12, uh, keeping the box nice and warm, and then um, we'll go into the, the vapor coating, which is essentially the same process but instead of uh, submerging the coils in caustic, I'm hanging them above uh, a warm heat source, uh, usually the, uh, the heating in my floor. And that will cause the vapor of the nano coating to uh, depose itself onto the copper and create a dark coating um, that can be used for this exchange of uh, energy. Right. And that dark nano coating, I always say that the molecules are further apart. It can be up to 45,000 layers thick. And mm -hmm. it actually almost acts as a superconductor. That the absolutely um, yeah. So this is the the magic, so to speak, of this technology. Um, it looks exceptionally simple here, um, showing you know three different materials in a cup. Um, it it is so because the man's uh, well, I want to say the man whose whose uh, whose concept this is sees things in ways that we don't, and it's a um, it's a field nice. interaction effect that Mr. Kesh is trying to show us, and yes. we're very much in the matter state world where we see and touch and feel things, and that's real to us. Um, this is a process that, as you begin to make the cup, starts to unfold within, um, and you start to get some of these answers. And what percentage? So you have salt water in the cup, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have a fifteen percent salt solution, which is approximately. So um, it, what, what is, is that about a quart or, um, yeah, uh, so a I'm a Canadian, so I, I use measurements, meter? which is a little different than the, uh, right. the U S so, uh, generally I have a scale and I, I weigh 150 grams of pure sea salt, um, not Himalayan because it contains iron, um, but pure sea salt. And I mix that into, uh, into water. And so you just nice. basically make sure that the water is, um, doesn't need to be too hot. You can just make it into a room temperature and uh, make sure it's fully dissolved and then you pour it into the cup and then you let it stand and, and sit um, right. until the time that you decide that you want to start to collect the, uh, the harvest. Okay. Wow, look at that. 
All right. Yeah. So if we look at this, this is obviously a second, um, you know, a few weeks later, it's a different cup entirely, but it's, uh, it's taken some time to, to produce its material there. And um, you can see the, the wire that connects these two, um, the two leads is a copper wire in the middle of the picture, um, taped up against the wall. That is technically where you could place a battery in that location if you wanted to use a battery to, um, to help produce again a bit more quickly. And it, those wires so, are we, coming out from each side you, where you've got a copper coil on one side and a zinc plate on the other side. It's bringing those around and connecting them to each other, right? Yeah, so if you look in the picture itself, it's a little bit hard to see, but the, um, the copper wire on the right-hand side, the uh -huh. smaller of the two, is connected to the nano-coated spiral in the middle. Okay. And then the zinc plate and the copper wire, the copper spiral, are connected together, and then they follow that left-handed uh, connection up to the top. Perfect. Great explanation. Thank you. No problem. And then the salt that you see there is just um, actually an interesting accumulation uh, that every couple of days I kind of go around. I have a, a little shot glass that I collect the, uh, the salt into and I use my, just my fingertips to collect that salt. Um, that's actually a piezoelectric salt that kind of deposits itself um, from the environment. It's very different than the salt. Mm. That's, it's, it's extremely interesting. And you'll notice as you start collecting them that they have very uh, geometric shape or a pattern to them, which is wow. So and then I've what will you do with for, those? Yeah, so there's a number of things that could be done. Um, one would be you could use it to put into a new cup. That would essentially mean that you'd put plasmatic salt into another plasmatic environment. Mm -hmm. And in doing this, we kind of bring the idea of comes from, goes back to, into this uh, technology. And um, that's really what this is all about. It's a mm, feedback system. Very so, cool. As we collect these things, we don't really want to throw them away and, uh, and think it's just some deposit on the edge. That was starseed talk. Comes from and goes back to. <laughs> I love well, that. I got that from Mr. Kesh, so I can't, uh, I can't, I can't well, uh, still, claim that it's myself. It's still starseed talk. He's a starseed too. He's just been here a little more longer. Yeah, He's definitely true. a big starseed. So this is another one. I think this is the very similar setup to the last guy. Um, it's in a different location in my house. And um, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that one later, but it's very much the, uh, the same idea. Okay. Now, the, 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 can, the connection wires that I've used here, I want to make a point to, um, to anyone who wants to replicate these. Excuse me. It's very important that we use pure material. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and so the, 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 the copper wire that's in those jackets that I'm using as the connection wire, it looks a lot like speaker cable. It's actually not speaker cable. It's called lamp wire. And lamp wire is 100% pure copper if you get it in that condition. Uh, speaker wire can often have aluminum in there. And so that's advised not to be used for these because then you're introducing a different field strength. Wow, great suggestion. And um, what about if you have the copper wire that's the really fine wires all twisted together into one wire? Will that work equally as well as the solid copper wire? Absolutely. In fact, it probably works better. Okay. Um, the stranded wire has a lot more surface area. So if we were to imagine um, a piece of string, like a, like a fishing line, um, compared to a fishing net, you can see how much more surface area there would be on a tiny little fishing line um, in, in terms of its outside interaction with the environment. So when we have a stranded wire, you actually get tiny little filaments that interact with each other as well as the plate across from it. So it's now, gonna be a benefit. Okay, is it required that these be plastic coated, these wires that are connecting this nope, together? Or not at all. Okay. Okay. No, I've just used those because I uh, didn't wanna strip the wire from the coating anymore. It's actually a pain to do so. Mm -hmm. um, getting it in nice strips, but um, I found an interesting other uh, aspect of this because it's coated in the plastic. Um, there's a nano coating process that's happening inside the wires, right? Um, due to the plastic condition, so we can get into that later in the other right. photos. But uh, that's really yeah. exciting. And what's really cool is you know you're also mentioning things that could be somebody could find as junk. You know, absolutely. Um, yeah, this is really important that that lots of us have um, have got all kinds of stuff around our homes that are actually good to use. Yes. And um, and there have been some videos done as to how you can find zinc. Um, copper is very easy to find in most of the Western world 
probably most of the world, in fact, it's in all of the, um, the cords. So actually, if you look in the background of that picture, there's um, a power bar. If I right. were to cut that yellow cord off mm -hmm. that power bar, I would have three, uh, three wires in there, a ground right. wire, yeah. um, a primary wire, and uh, another wire. So those three could be stripped, and you could use that for, uh, for your cut. So if you're in an emergency situation, the best number one thing to do if you need to find copper is find an old appliance and cut the cord. Nice. Like your TV, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that TV to go stand in the corner until it has something good to say, right? Yeah, there you go. So this is, again, the same picture from the top view. Um, it just shows a little bit more what's going on. And, I really um, like it. You can see the zinc, which is kind of getting um, eaten away a little bit by the yeah, metal process. Yeah, so that happens. Um, and that's something to keep an eye on, too, is as you're using a uh, battery in particular, the zinc plates tend to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not a bad thing. You just right. need to be cognizant to replace them or the uh, nano-coated copper spiral if they happen to start um, requesting it. Like the, the cups will, will begin to communicate with you and uh, if you're yes. asking them questions, they will, they will answer. Yes. And then the nano copper is in the middle and then the um, plain copper on the outside there. Yeah. That's easy, right. Kind of easy to see. So this is a nice little diagram that got handed to me by somebody who made it who is a knowledge seeker i'm not even really sure who but thank you whoever you are because this will help people learn yeah um, this is a great diagram that shows the top view mm -hmm. and um and it's good that uh carrie's put all the, the different annotations on it as to what the different uh the different metals are and um, so that shows you a different version of um, the photos that we just shared <clears throat> now i'll just make one comment here is that the bridge that you see as uh, labeled as d down the middle um it would be uh, good to make a comment that that would just be a copper wire okay not that be not a some kind wire. of other metal like not Correct. steel for instance um that's something that happened at the beginning where people were putting anything that they wanted there and then they realized that they've introduced a new metal good so it's just good to have the copper and uh yeah use that and if somebody wanted to study this a little bit they can always um stop the video and and look at the images yeah, absolutely. That would be important to do for sure. And this is the side view, obviously, shows the uh, how the connections work. And again, um, we have the nano copper in the middle, the plain copper on the outside, and the zinc on the outside. And then I see, just like you explained, the nano coated, uh, or the plain copper is over here. The nano copper goes up to this cross beam and... Yeah, and then we have our battery connection, which is the only other thing we need to explain a little bit. Right. Is the, um, you want to connect the outside two components to the positive side of the battery. So you can see the zinc and the copper get twisted together, and then they connect onto the plus. Right. Here's the zinc, and here's the copper, and those yeah. are getting twisted together on the plus end of the battery. Yeah, and then um, the other thing that's important to, to mention is that we see all the wires here and they're above the, the water line. Mm -hmm. So if you were to draw a little water line with your, with your mouse there kind of around uh, the jar, you'd see that you want to keep the wires ab uh, above the water line because essentially yes. what's going to happen is the salt will start to try and leave the cup if there is anything below that level where it can uh, corrode or drip down. And not that it's a problem, but sometimes the salt that will build up on the connection points will cause the, uh, the wires to no longer conduct electricity or plasmatic flow. And so every so often I will check my cups and notice that if I don't take the salt off the wires and re-twist re them a bit, that they uh, sometimes lose their connections. Mm, very good. Very good. And then very also good. one other point would be just the voltage of the battery. We want to be using yes. dead batteries. So um, a battery that comes in this form is usually AA, AAA, uh, the C or the D cell batteries. So all of those batteries have a maximum rating of 1.5 volts when they're brand new. And what I've found is actually really great is you can go to most of the recycle stations um, and, uh, and go into the bin and just collect the old D cell or, or the big batteries because most of them are going to be discharged already and um, they're perfect for making GANs. So. That's another nice. way to find a use for all of your dead batteries. Very cool. And then I just wanted to point out too, the nano-coated copper is on the copper piece that goes across the top of the jar. 
and then it is wired to the negative end of the battery. Right. And all those connecting wires are actually just pure copper. They're not uh, nothing special. All of the wires that connect to the battery and connect to the other side are just regular copper wires from, uh, from your house or wherever you find it. Great. Oh, good. This is a nice picture. Yeah, I love this, this one. The, um, so I made a, a large cup of life. <laughs> I've been making many small ones and I got, you know what, I've got to make a lot more. This is uh, like so, a gallon. It's kind of like a yeah, gallon jug. Yeah, it is a it? gallon. It's a yes. gallon. It's a gallon size jug with. Um, with it's a got the water on the spigot on the bottom. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I found was interesting with this. Uh, in this picture here, I haven't put the battery on. I just connected mm -hmm. it directly with the um, the little copper wire that you see on the left hand side there. Right. Uh, pigtailing off of the big black wire, and um, I ran that for about a day and a half, and I got a nice cloud in there. Um, producing the, the GANs in that way. But I decided at a certain point that I wanted to put one of the, uh, one of the D cell batteries from the recycle station on there. So that's mm. what I did. And it's producing a lot of GANs actually. So there it is. Yeehaw. Oh, good. <laughs> I love that. Anybody who makes GANs has to love this picture. It's just beautiful. You can just see the GANs billowing out of that salt water and from the elements working together. It's just really gorgeous. Yeah. Thanks. It looks really uh, fluffy in that in that middle area. It's interesting. There's also a big collection of the GANs at the top, which is of yes. Um, it's actually of a different field strength than that on the bottom. So, if um, if people are, are you, finding that they have a lot of GANs at the top of their kit, they can sometimes try and collect it um, independent of the material on the bottom. What I found in this case, which uh, I've never done this before, but I made up about I think about eight gallons of of salt water. So I made, uh, you know, in different small jars. And what I did is I would open the spigot in the bottom of the tap, and then I would just pour fresh salt water into the top and keep the tap open on the bottom. So essentially I would have a huge big cloud of uh, GANs show up in the container and it would leave through the spigot. And so I would rinse this and then return the salt water back into the container and continually do this, you know, maybe once a day or so for the last four days. Wow. And um, that container has produced about a half of a gallon of GANs in four days. Wow. How cool. So it's amazing. And um, yeah, we, we can discuss a little more, but that, that is all from a, you know, a dead battery for free. Uh, each one of the electrodes is about 12 inches long. Um, and the nano coating on that electrode was done by Caustic. Um, but yeah, otherwise this has been a very, very, um, <laughs> amazing how much it's produced and I've Gorgeous. replaced the zinc plate once already because it completely uh, completely deteriorated last yes because so. they'll turn black on the outside the zinc plate will and that means all the zinc is gone and that means you need to replace it with another one um, yeah and, especially when um, when you're using a battery because the uh, the voltage or the amperage that's in the um, the power supply is actually uh -huh. drawing the material out much quicker. And right. so generally when we see like the pictures I showed first without the battery, um, there's not really going to be uh, much loss. You will, mm -hmm. you will eventually lose the plate, but um, with the battery it can happen in a couple of days. So you have to be careful right. to not run it without anything in there because then essentially you're creating a different condition. And why don't we mention really quickly where people would get zinc? I know you can get... Oh yeah like That's a really roof good point. flashing i've bought it before as roof flashing from home depot where you get a 50 foot roll and it's rolled up you i think the one you got was a little wider than the one i got um yeah and, i can show you really quickly if you want i'll just grab the two different okay. um, zincs that i've got and i can put them up to the screen okay go ahead okay so i went and got my zinc so that's the um, the product that I've got here available in Canada. Um, it comes in a roll. Very nice. And yeah. This is really thin, so you can cut this almost with um, almost with a pair of scissors. So um, this is a fair bit of zinc. It also I know it's also but available at a place. What I've oh found. wow! And this is a lot thicker. Wow. So this was what I bought about a year ago. Um, let me see if I can get the whole thing in there. <laughs> um, like a foot wide, kind of. Yeah, exactly. So this is quite a bit uh, thicker. Right. It's hard to get the gauge there. But anyway. We can um, see it pretty well. Yeah, yet. good. 
So those are those are just um, in a way. Um, if you want, if you're able to buy bulk, um, I found the big roll at a company that's actually an American company. Um, I don't know if you want to give them any free advertising or not, but I could give you the link, or we can even put that in the description for later. Yeah, we can put it in the description, and um, or you okay. can go ahead and mention it if you know what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's called rotometals.com. Okay. R O T O metals.com. I have no <laughs> influence with them whatsoever. Yes. Uh, they did send yes, something yes. to me t from uh, the West Coast of the US to Canada in about a day and a half. Wow. I was shocked for free. That's amazing. So that was really cool. They have, nice. um, you can buy some zinc plates from them for free. You just end up paying for shipping, which wow. is really nice. Um, you just want to make sure that if you purchase from them, that you're buying pure zinc and not uh, a zinc with a patina on it because right. they have like a different color for, for uh, like a golden color or something like that. So and then just I, beware. I, good. And then I also know in the boating industry, if you live near where boats are, that they make certain zinc parts for boats. I'm not sure what they are. Yeah, the anodes. Zinc the anodes. anodes. They, What's an they anode? Are, um, oh, it's like a battery anode? Well, they're or, in a way, they're just attached to the boat for, um, for corrosion and for other things. Okay. Like the, the material that here, you know, this is called moss be gone. Uh -huh. You know, it's, it's, it's essentially, or goodbye moss, sorry. Right. It's for, um, it's for keeping that condition um, of, of kind of cleanliness of, of, uh, of moss. So in, in, the same, in, in the same way, it's, it applies to boats, but they come in kind of, um, they're interesting shapes if you buy them from, from boating supply shops, um, but you can definitely use those as long as they're pure zinc and, uh, and don't contain an iron core because you can get galvanized material that's just different, so. Nice. Cool. the boating so, industry, that's a perfect example. Yeah, great. So this is your beautiful gallon jug here with the battery. I don't know how you got that battery to sit on top like that. That's pretty good. Uh, um, yeah, it was a little balancing act. Yeah. <laughs> and some tape. And then you basically followed the diagrams we've looked at before, and it is making this really beautiful GANS. What would you say is the difference with the GANS that's floating on the top? Uh, it's of a different field strength. Um, I can't exactly explain it in layman's terms, other than that right. it's just um, a different energetic And so uh, are you saving some of that it. in different jars? I haven't been, mainly because of um, the process that I have to remove the GANs comes from the bottom. It's right. actually coming out the tap at the bottom, but mm -hmm. the, um, I have done in other cases, taken a syringe to the top and just kind of collected it that way. Um, if you had a, a wider mouth, it would be easier to scoop with a plastic spoon, but I found right. the plastic spoon will often hit the, uh, the electrodes uh, and sometimes chip a bit of the, the, the material off. So I'm okay. trying to keep that out. So are you harvesting any aminos off the top of this? So in general, when I, um, on this setup, not in the same way. Um, okay. I'm getting the aminos actually when I wash the GANs, okay. which is interesting because um, Normally, I would take the uh, take a syringe or a plastic spoon and scoop up what's uh, floating on the top. But when you end up putting a battery on there, um, the aminos get mixed in with the GANs that comes up to the surface. So it's okay. very hard to tell which is which. Mm -hmm. And in fact, most of the time with power being supplied to the system, the amount of aminos is very low. Okay. So um, I have other cups that we can maybe show, and those ones create a lot more aminos. Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll put those aminos into, uh, yeah, like this one. Perfect. There, I see aminos on the top of those. Yeah, there's lots. And the and aminos are the kind of, it looks like a little oiliness, or it isn't really oily, but it looks a little oily on the top of there. And well, it actually is oily. It is It's, it's oily. a fat. Okay. It's a okay. fat, which is amazing, because this is, wow. this is essentially what we're Creating. These are the building blocks for the protein structures that we have okay. in our bodies. Right. And they are growing in a very crystalline kind of a way on the surface, um, being attracted into the container by, nice. um, by the field interactions. And you'll notice, which is really interesting, as you begin to make these cups that you can, um, how do I put this? You can feed from the aminos. Yes. So one thing I've done, and you're probably well aware about this before by, by dipping your finger into the aminos mm -hmm. and kind of savoring the taste of the, uh, the fatty saltiness. Yes. Um, it's a very interesting sensation. So that's something for people to try um, as they Yeah. Look. And you can use a little plastic spoon to scoop those out and put them into their own container. Yeah, that's um, perfect. Yeah, I generally use a little shot glass, kind of a small glass next to um, next to my GANS collecting kit. And I just take a spoonful of the aminos, pour it into the little uh, 
into that container and save them. And so then Nikolai, after I wash the gans, I'll put that back into the bottles. Great. So Nikolai, I'm seeing, so after you wash the gans, you put the aminos back in to the bottle with the, with the gans. Yeah, so I'll, okay. I'll wash the gans of it and then I'll pour, you know, a spoonful of, of the aminos back into my container that holds the water with oh, the cool. gans so that that okay. at least has the connection. Back and it's not getting lost when you do the rinsing. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes the, the rinsing does, you end up losing those aminos, but if you're right. creating many cups, you can kind of get a sampling from all of the different cups and their combined fields will, um, will allow you to collect a little bit here and there. Right. So Nikolai, I'm seeing two jars here. What happened? Did one have babies? It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's got two. Yeah. So yeah. this is called the twin setup. Okay. And in fact, there's a couple more things happening in here. You can see I've got two central coils on each side. Yes. Why is that there? And who knows? Uh, so a couple things. We'll go to the first part of both. So we still have a zinc twin so, setup. So we still have a zinc plate on the outside of each. And yes. then we have, but they're faced this way. So the zincs are to the outside. And then we have a plain copper coil to the inside. And then what is the double where the nano coated copper is? Yeah, so um, the nano-coated copper coil still sits in the middle. I put a secondary one in here on each side because I've noticed that the nano-coating had completely um, removed itself from the coils. And I was shocked. I was surprised. I thought, why have they gone red? They're not black anymore. And what's actually happening in the cup, which is very interesting, as you, uh, you may see in the next photo, is that the nano-coating has transferred from the central column to the outside uh, coppers. So if we look at that, oh, you know, go back to that one actually, it's good the yeah. description there. Um, so the, the nano-coated coil in the middle is often black, but in this case, the coating jumped from the central column to the outside. So the, what used to be the bare copper became dark, and what used to be dark became bare. And so we have this kind of an interesting exchange happening, and um, it's just a part of these systems that once you nanocoat these, these coils, they're nanocoated for life, even if you can't see the nanocoating on them. And this was a really uh, a head scratcher for me because I didn't want to believe it or I didn't believe it, so I put a second coil in. And um, that was just my decision to do so. But um, I think in general, we don't need to put another coil. It was just a part of my insecurity of the, the cup no, no longer working. Right. Um, and I found that the production boosted back up a bit for, for a certain amount of time. And then it became, uh, it came to a new kind of a, a new level of balance. And then it began to produce a lot more amino acids than GANs. Mm. And so it's like the cup shifted into a different gear. Mm. It understood that production in one way was no longer needed and it, and it decided to do it in a different way. And this is a very living process. It's a living alchemical process. So it's good to actually do it. And then when you're doing it, you learn to how to interact with your, um, with your process. Yeah, absolutely. They, they change. And, and, you know, I talked earlier, I mentioned that they, they talk and, you know, some people will go, oh yeah, sure, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's true. I mean, if, you, if you're not listening to it, they're not going to speak. But if you actually decide to tune in and, and, you know, ask one of the cups or many of them and say, you know, hi, how are you? What do you need from me? Do you need any what? Like they'll answer and those answers will come immediately. So nice. that's just a, a cool. And so what are we doing with the two cups here? What's the point or what's the, what's the objective with the two cups? Oh, sorry. I just broke up there. Uh, yeah. yeah the, the objective with the two cups is that we create a condition here that doesn't have a battery. Okay. So what we're doing with the twin setup is, um, it's like an oscillator. One of the cups will begin producing more and then the other one will. And if you look at the way that they're set up, it's a little hard to just see in all of my wires, but if we go to the next picture in the slide deck, yeah. um, it's the, uh, the side view, yeah. So what we can see here is that, let's just look at the, the right-hand cup for a moment. And you can see how zinc and copper are connected together. Yeah. And how the nano-coated copper is on its own. Yes. And if we were just looking at the right hand cup for now and imagining that the other one didn't exist there, so to speak, you'd find that the nano and the copper and the zinc aren't actually connected. And if you look at the diagram, you find out that the nano in the right cup is connected to the zinc and the copper in the left cup. And gotcha. we're thinking, how is this possible? 
in the right. normal condition of the matter state, this doesn't really work. This is not an electrical system that we can say is, uh, you know, makes a lot of sense. Um, but in the plasma world, it's actually perfect. So what happens is the cup on the right, uh, the copper and the zinc, which we call the, um, the matter state materials, and the zinc, or sorry, and the nano being the, the, the nano condition, it's a, it's a slightly different energetic condition than the, um, than the matter state copper and zinc. So you have, um, in a way, like an oscillator happening. And one of them is going to request something from the other side, and it kind of goes back and forth in these pulses. So this system doesn't require a battery, and the GANs that you collect from it is very, very fine. Um, really, really thin material. It seems to, to almost be suspended in the solution a bit more, like it's, um, it's sitting in like a cloud of, of, of salt. And um, yeah, so that's the twin cup. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a version which is slower for sure. Uh, I find it produces amazing amino acids. Um, the GANs from the bottom is very fluffy and, um, and very peaceful. And again, this is the same thing, right? Yeah, so this is uh, another version of that. Okay. Um, you can see again, the zinc plates are on the outside. Uh, the nano coated spiral is in the middle. And then I've got the two coppers uh, facing each other in the middle. And as far as taking these different Ganses, what would be the purpose of using the first cup of life and then using the second cup of life? Yeah, that's actually a really important distinction to make. Um, we can maybe get into that when we go into the kit. If okay. Not, I can uh, talk about how we, how we have use the application. Okay. Uh, well, so this is really another pretty. version of the same setup, but with right? uh, multiple... <laughs> inner cores again. Nice. Um, I just decided at a certain point that I wanted to use those. Uh, just a note here, the zinc on the outsides is actually a coil on this setup, not okay. a plate. Uh, that is pure zinc still, 100% okay. pure zinc. So if you do decide to use a different, um, you know, a coil instead of a plate, just know that it needs to still be pure material. Just know what? Oh, that the purity needs to be there. You can't okay, use something in the that's material. galvanized metal because that will cause a different condition. Right. So again, this is the same. Um... This is the second cup, actually. So this is um this is the one version where oh right this is so this is again copper. different than the first two we've already talked about. Yes. So this so is um, the first the cup of life. Plate. We have a zinc plate on the right hand side, right. and now we have a copper plate there. Gotcha. So this is going to be a GANS that is far more uh, a CEO-based GANS, if okay. we're uh, com comparing it to the, uh, to the old school names, if uh, that makes sense. Right. So here's one of those. And um, one thing that was explained, which is if we go back to the picture before, um, you see that there's a piece of copper plate on the right-hand side. Yes. If you don't happen to have um, copper plate, what I did and what was recommended is that you can make an accordion zigzag back and forth kind of a plate. So I you see make you a, did that uh, there. Yeah, it's like a wire version of a plate. Right, got it. So you don't really beat on it with a hammer, you just fold it back and forth in order to get Yeah, it. that's right. I just go like, you know, kind of a zigzag like this and then kind right. of compress them all into a flat accordion. And um, so that's what it looks like from the top. And nice. again, the setup is in this case without a battery. Um, mm -hmm. This cup itself, I actually started it with a battery, and um, and then I changed it to a wire afterwards because I found that the uh, production had been too fast. Was too fast? Yeah, so it was uh, too much voltage going in. Okay. Or too much amperage going in. Right. I know um, copper will go really fast with amperage on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So it changed it entirely. Uh, this is the same idea as the... Um, as the other twin cup that we saw, except right. for made for the second cup of life. Second cup so of life. So again, this has the, the copper, copper, copper. And we can mention one of the things, it, tell me if this is accurate, we're setting up kind of an infinity loop here between these Absolutely. two cups. Absolutely. Yeah, you got it. So and that's sort as of you can part see, yeah, totally. So one thing to note actually, which was one thing I had done incorrectly to begin with was I had my wires crossing in kind of like an X pattern. Uh huh. Uh, if you can imagine this, um, where the wires are on the opposite side of each other. Right. So if I had that, that, um, like, on the, yeah, right where your cursor is there, if that copper connection had been flipped um, 
let's go straight down. If you had them south. crossed in the middle here, then that would not be good. Yeah, exactly. So the fields of the wires are actually carrying um, a spiraling field around the, the, the central wire, like that nano-coated copper wire that's going from one side to the other. Uh, you want to keep it in an open circle. So it kind of creates cool. that dynamic, um, like a yin-yang kind of a symbol. Yeah. Awesome. And here we have a nice diagram that shows the, um, how this cup is set up. Now this looks very much like the um, other diagram. It is exactly the same. We've just made the, uh, the difference this being that the plates are copper now. Not copper zinc. instead of zinc here. Yes. Yeah. And it is very important to note that in that description, we want to make sure that we do have a plate on the outside. Um, okay. Right. It was explained to us that there's a difference between a plate and a spiral. And that is something that is a little bit tricky to explain. Um, but for the time being, we want to stay within the physicality um, right. of this planet. And yes. so part of that rule is that we have a container that we work within. Right. And so these two sides of the, of the twin setup are kind of like the container for our souls to operate within so that we don't leak out into the environment. So to speak. And again, if you can't find the copper plate, then making a zigzagged flat piece of copper out of copper wire will work as well. Exactly. And yeah, then yeah. again, the reason for the twin cups as opposed to the single cups is because you're setting up an infinity loop between yeah, them, exactly. which is also accelerating those fields. Yeah, so in Amplifying. fact, between those two, uh, the two that I showed, the, the twin setup and the, and the single cup, Right. The twin setup makes way more GANs, which is very interesting because it's actually accelerating um, itself, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's building the fields up. So and then one also, side helps, it builds the other side up. So it's doing this kind of back and forth. And I'll find that one cup will produce more. And I'll go and collect it, and then the other one will produce more. Wow. So they need to be in, in, uh, out of sync a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I've also seen in the diagrams Mr. Kesh has been drawing in the Knowledge Seekers workshops where you have the twin cup, and then you have a single cup, and then you have another twin cup, and you're also creating an infinity loop back and forth between those different groups of the cups as well. Yeah, that's actually a good point to make a mention of, is that we want to keep the cups about uh, three feet or one meter away from each other. Right. So that the fields of one don't necessarily um, alter the fields of another one. So Great. if you can, I mean, obviously not everybody has that luxury, but um, if you can place uh, your individual cups in the different corners of the room or in different areas of the house, and they, uh, they will actually link up. And one of the things that I've mentioned in over all the years that I've been sharing about this is um, we're really dealing with fields as much as we're dealing with matter, we're dealing with field strength and we are creating fields and we are using those fields to help transmit into and through these materials. So it's kind of a, um, kind of a really different way of thinking about things. Yeah, that's a good point. In, uh, Mr. Kesh always used to say- We're very much in both worlds right now. Yeah, my favorite comment of Mr. Kesh's <laughs> over the years was always, you need to learn to think beyond the matter state. And, yeah. oh, and wow. that's really what we have to do with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll make an, another point onto this because that brought something to mind which came to me in um, one of the recent teachings in, in Rick's uh, reactor class, actually, the, uh, one, of the, one of the public groups. And, um, and that was a discussion about how within one of the cups itself, the material like the, the copper or the nano-coated copper is in a way, um, it's like the opposite. So if we're looking inside this cup and we see the blackness of the, of the different drawing uh -huh. aspects, imagine that as like the, flip it around. So look at the space in between all of those wires and imagine right. that that's the container uh -huh. and that where the metal itself is, that's like a highway. It's like a super fast where, uh, area for the inertia of the material to build up. So the inertia builds up through the matter state and then it expands through the fields and the field condition is what we're really after. Yes. So it's like when you're imagining it from the plasma perspective, the matter is like not important. Uh -huh. um, but when it, when it comes to the matter, it's going to slow down. Mm -hmm. And then as it gets to the other side, it speeds back up again because it's gathered its strength through that inertial period. So that was interesting. It just came through in one of the classes. Very cool. Okay. Okay, yeah. So here's um, two different layers of GANS color. 
in um, so let's just kind of reiterate here so basically we've got the first cup of life which is made with the salt water and it has a zinc plate a nano coated copper in the middle and a plain copper coil on the outside yeah. and then we have the second cup of life which is a plain copper on one side copper coil nano coated copper on the other side and a copper plate on nan nano coated copper in the middle and a copper plate on the other side or zigzagged copper wire to make yeah. a plate and then you can make a double one or a twin cup out of each one of those yeah and absolutely. so a lot of people who are making this for the cv19 are making multiple cups at the same right. time in yeah. one um setup yeah, in one in one home, in one, one home. in one in yeah. one bubble. Because right. essentially, what we're doing is we're creating these these domes around our home. And yes, our plasma oasis. Yeah, yeah, and they're all gonna connect together. That's the yes. great the great Absolutely. hidden uh, the hidden agenda, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> um, but if we look at this picture here, I just the reason I've got this here is for those people who are making their cups and. Um, and they're following the instructions on the Wikipedia, which I think we'll put into the description of the Absolutely. video. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's really a good way to go. Yep. And, it's cash, um, it's cash foundation. Um, uh, the, if, the wiki is not that. It's right. like, e, if, it's, if, oh yeah, yeah. so go ahead. Well, if you go to cash foundation, then the wiki is down at the bottom under all the little, it's under education. You can click on it and find wiki, but go ahead and you tell how you find your way there. Oh yeah, no, uh, we'll put it in the description box yep. in the bottom because that'll be a link that'll be a yes. direct. Yes, be its own go. link and it has a whole explanation again on how to do all of this. Yeah, perfect. And one thing I'll note is um, for those people who don't want to uh, read instructions on a computer screen, go to the, the print function and print as a PDF nice. because you'll eventually get the entire thing out in a, in a more legible um, way. So you're not reading a computer nice. screen to go through. And you'll have a copy of it in case Everything shuts down. Yeah, in case we don't get access to the internet for some time, that's, uh, yeah. that's a possibility. So, good. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind for everyone. Um, in this photo, I just the only reason it's in our slide deck is um, we have two different colors. And oftentimes, color is an indicator of what's there, but it's not the only indicator. Um, and so in this setup, I had used uh, a battery, and I connected it up, and I made a very, very red GANS. And it kind of scared me. I thought, well, what is this? <laughs> I thought I was going to get a green GANS. Why is it red? Right. And uh, I realized that the battery that I had used had probably got too much charge still in it. Got it. And so I decided to take it out. And I removed the, a lot of the red GANS, but not all of it. Clearly, there was still some left. And then I just uh, changed the battery to a copper wire. And then the blue kind of uh, turquoise GANS started to appear. Nice. So it just uh, formed instead. Nice. And, um, and that's the one that I've begun to, uh, I've, I've continued to use the, that setup. Nice. Very nice. And so you, this is actually, then you started using a setup without a battery. For yeah, this that's one right. Particular yeah, exactly. Setup. Yeah. And here in the next slide, I'll, uh, talk and about I love that. it that you're going to the recycle center and getting old batteries. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, a great idea. <laughs> Why Maybe, not? I don't know if there's recycle centers here with those where I am, but I think most people, especially in the U.S. or Canada or Europe, would have. Uh, yeah, would they're, have they're definitely available. Centers. Whether or not we can get to them now in the different stages of lockdown that exist right. in you know the planet, who knows? Um, a scrapyard would be another place to look for different kinds of metal. Um, if you can, yes. If you can talk to somebody, because mm -hmm. some some uh, recycle stations will just take the material off your hands. But if you go to a um, uh, a scrapyard that takes it by the different type of metal, they may be able to sell you copper or zinc back. This is a whole other subject, but man, when I was in Florida, they were like, oh no, there's a law. We don't let anybody buy back metals here anymore. Oh, they all no. get shipped off to the military or something. And I was like, oh, oh. Right. <clears throat> well, maybe there's other, uh, other agendas afoot with these, these collecting facilities, yeah. you know? And, and I'm sure every place, it's still worth looking because every place is different and yeah. junkyard, you know, but it's still a great idea to check. Just, just because, you know, there are many people, uh, you know, I'm sure you uh, interviewed Tom uh, Salas in the past. Yes. He did videos around when there was a, a big hurricane, hurricane in Dominica, yep. making materials out of essentially garbage. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so that's just an amazing um, uh, idea for people to, to, yes. to kind of just put up. Yep. Um, so yeah, this picture here shows the difference between the same cup. It's actually the very same GANS container. Um, 
one with a battery and one without. Wow. And um, I was amazed. It looks like strawberry juice or jam almost. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, and uh, I brought this up with one of our teachers in one of the classes and I said, hey, you know, we've got, you know, I've got a very different color. Uh, what do I do? And the answer was, well, well, the, the answer was a question. It was, did you put any uh, iron into your cup? Right. Was there any iron in the metal? Was there any possible way there was iron in there? The answer that I gave was no. And, uh, and then the answer that came back was, okay, you're fine. It's totally good to go. Don't worry. You can use it. Mm -hmm. So just so people are aware, uh, if they get this result, the first thing to do would be to analyze the materials that you put in, um, the different kinds of materials that you use, and uh, rule out anything that could be uh, incorrect. Um, for instance, the, uh, the salt that might have iron in it, or um, a, a galvanized plate somehow got in there, or anyway, um, just make sure you don't have iron. Uh, if you don't, then you have a copper-based GANS, and it's totally okay to use. Great suggestions. Awesome. All right. So here we've got a kit set up. And, um, wow, for, this is uh, so cool. So you've got a zinc plate up here. Yeah. You've got a That's nano coil and roll. copper coil. Yeah. And, and you've got, got a plain one. copper coil. Yeah, exactly. And then all those connecting wires are uh, the same lamp wire. So it's 100% right. pure copper and Lamp it's stranded. Wire. Nice. So what'll happen with that is the uh, the connection that goes to the zinc plate and the nano or and the uh, the top half of that yes. Y setup. That, that one wire will there. eventually begin to nano coat itself. Okay. Based on the condition, and the other one will stay copper. Nice. Um, and um, that's a for us Canadians, that's a loony on the bottom corner. That's the one dollar coin. Uh -huh. So that's there to represent the actual cost of this entire kit is less than one dollar. Nice, less than a dollar. I love it. And so this is the little bar that goes across the top of the jar. This is, um, and that will have the nano coated copper uh, right. coil hanging on it. And then this wire is, is then coming from that nano coated copper coil, and it will come out to connect to this wire or the two ends of the battery. And I see, yeah. I love it that you have Marty Mark positive. I put a plus and a minus it. for, you yes. know, really make it simple. Um, so are you sharing these mind, kits with people? Yeah, so I'm giving this freely to anyone in my area who wants them. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's anybody in Vancouver, BC um, area that is ill, that is sick, whose family members are sick, someone who's a healthcare practitioner, anyone who's in the front line who really actually is in need, um, I'm happy to provide them to anyone, but in a way, what I've found is there's no real reason to try and, um, we can't push this technology right. in any way. Um, you can't push a rope, as one of uh, our teachers has often That's said, cute. I love that exp explanation. Uh -huh. We have to pull, and we have to create the conditions for those individuals to, to create the pull themselves. Right. And um, so I had this, this entire um, you know, dilemma with my own family, with my, with my parents not wanting to believe what I was doing. And, right. And um, it created a control drama in a way that, mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that was really negative for, for, my, for myself. Mm. Um, and it, I became clear with it and I detached from the outcome of it. And then just the other day, both of my parents, independent of each other, made their own cup. And I went, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. How, How cool, cool is that? And so, I will say in opposite of the... Um, we also say, they said, um, you can't push a rope. And we always say, there can't be a tug of war if you let go of the rope. <laughs> so, you know, when we let it go, a lot of times then That's right. the people will change their course. Well, there's no resistance after there's we no let resistance. go, right? Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, it comes right back to us with a magnet. Right, there, so. right. This um, is beautiful. I love it. And anybody could make these who's got a little... Oh, totally. Yeah, it's ability. really easy to make yes. them. Uh, the only reason I have the nano-coated copper in a container there is if that was to be transported somewhere, right. um, it would kind of keep the coating a little bit uh, safe. Right. And so that, about uh, how long are these? They look, are they about 18 turns or? Um, I didn't measure the turns anymore. Okay. I didn't. I just made them the same size as the zinc plate. Um, are they maybe? Okay, the same size as the zinc plate. And it looks yeah, like it's, it's maybe be, as long as my finger, maybe? Yeah, uh, I would say... I think a loony is about, an, I think the dollar at the bottom there, the coin oh, yeah. is about an Oh, yeah, so you could take that. So it'd so, be about three of those. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm about an inch and a quarter wide on that okay. zinc plate. So uh -huh. that might give a reference. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
And um, so yeah, this is what I, uh, I delivered this to, um, well, somebody who, through the foundation, we found a doctor out in Vancouver who was sick and had been in quarantine. And so um, he didn't actually ask for this, but we delivered it based on his soul kind of calling for it. Um, wow. We made a video, you know, we went on to the, um, the local news and was just talking about how we shouldn't be taking this virus so lightly. And um, I don't know whether he's accepted the technology into his life or not. That's going to uh -huh. be up to him. But um, so we have the, the spray bottle on the left-hand side. That's uh -huh. got the plasma water uh, cleaned of the salt. Yep. So that, that can be used to spray your body. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the one cup, one life. And I gave him a syringe on the other hand, on the other side of the bag. Yep. And everything in the middle has the, uh, what the you kit. saw in the last picture. Nice. And then just, uh, a little... Um, a little piece of paper that shows the website for how to find the instructions. Perfect. Yeah, you wouldn't even have to write out the instructions. Just give no, the wiki. No, we can't because there's so much to learn in, in yes. such a short amount of time and we Brilliant. have no idea as to what where the person great is on the other end. Great suggestion. Yes, great, great. Did you give so, the wiki yeah. um, address? Yep. Is that what you gave? Yeah, Perfect. I just put the, it's just en.kfwiki.org and then I okay. said underneath that, latest updates, one cup, one life, second cup of life. Great. And it, at that point, it's really up to the soul of the individual to decide. Yes. En.wiki.org. No, en.kfwiki. En.kfwiki.org. And the okay. en is just for the English language. So in okay. a way, that's um, that could be different. If you want a different language, there are many different languages on the yeah. site. So if you we'll just, put those links in the chat in the, yes, in the description box. In the description. Box. Very good. What a great, and the wiki's being updated all the time. So oh yeah, it it's actually very active data. right now. So um, there are videos it. being added to the wiki as well, but people can watch um, other knowledge seekers or students and um, see how they've done it. Love it. Um, again, this is the, the picture of the uh, kit delivered onto the front step right. of the man's house. I gave cool. him a liter of the water on the left to drink. Nice. And then, um, the rest is there. 320 second um, knowledge seekers workshop I see on there. Yeah, that was the most recent one. So that's uh -huh. the one I wrote down on the list for cool. him to, to go and look up. And um, again, we, we, we can only do so much. That's um, right. There's, there's only so much hand holding that can be done and the rest is up to them. Yeah. This looks so yummy and delicious and wonderful. <sighs> oh, the fluffy Dan, little clouds, all you right? Dan's lovers out there, are you just drooling? Oh yeah. Well, this is uh, this is amazing because this this all came from that one uh, one gallon jug that you had uh, shown earlier wow. with, with the D cell battery. tell me again. I want to understand this. It was the gallon jug with the spigot on the bottom, and once you right. made a bunch of gans, you were opening the spigot and then just pouring new salt water into it. Yeah. So I don't know a what overcame idea. me to do this, but I, yeah. I sat there and I had a long. Uh, I had a long plastic straw with a syringe and I was drawing it once, twice. I'm like, this is taking forever. I had a right. spigot on the bottom. You know, that was the whole point of this, you know, was to right. use the, 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 that way. And so what I would do is I would fill the, uh, the gallon jug on, the, on your left there. I would put that up to the bottom of the spigot uh -huh. and then I would pour in the, uh, the fresh salty water. Like you can see in the uh, right. two jars, the first half is clear. So I would decant that into another jar leave the gans on the bottom to settle out and then pour the salt water back into the top of the container while collecting at the bottom. And so that would cause all of the gans in the, um, in the gallon jug to kind of swirl around and to be mixed in. Right. And then it would, it would have a very uh, saturated solution of gans uh -huh. and salt. It would pull itself out. And um, yeah, I did that probably, oh, maybe five times. And then you'd pour the clear water, you'd pour the salty water out of the gallon and save it. Exactly. Yeah, and then and I would let, fill it let up it with fresh for, sweet water. Yeah. So in fact, I wasn't I wasn't washing anything yet. At this point, uh -huh. I was just recycling the salt water okay. and doing it until I could collect just a lot. Saving of the gans and recycling yeah. the salt water. Okay. Yeah. So that that was an idea that um, I hadn't used quite as uh, extensively as this before. Mm -hmm. I'd done so, but but more you know with a syringe. So I would take out the gans with a syringe and then add that much more water back in. And that mm -hmm. was a consistent way of, of making sure the cups kept reducing. But um, with this one, I just decided that all of it, all at once I would dump in a... And then you were down. rinsing with a jar like this? Like yeah, so the next a... photo might be the rinse okay. process. We can go to that. 
Right. Yeah. So here I just filled up all the different glass jars I had to um, probably about 90% full with uh, tap Wait. water. Tap water. Okay. Yeah. Just my normal drinking water. Um, right. I have a filter on my system here, nice. but living in Vancouver in Canada, we have exceptionally good water. Uh -huh. um, so one of the things that was mentioned was for us to use the water that is in our environment. So exactly. If I'm I drinking mean, it, that's people, what we've got to use. Yeah, people make homeopathic remedies from the Ganges River. So I just, you know, somehow we have to use what's around us. Yeah, it's, it's the best way. And, yeah. you know, then we're not trying to buy distilled material and all yeah. the rest. So, Hopefully if it's um, not toxified. Well, in a way, it doesn't matter because the Gans is actually of such we'll a high energy it. content. It will do the trick. I agree. So that's what is, a, you know, in a way, it's our, it's our, it's our saving, uh, it's our back suit. Right. <laughs> we can so, do whatever we like with that. Basically, when you pour salt water off, you are saving all of that. Is that correct? Yeah. No, I'll tell you what I did, actually, in, with, this, with this rinse water. Um, this picture I took last night. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight And so eight this is glasses. partly salty. These were filled up with fresh water, but there's going to be some salt in it because... Um, yeah, absolutely. A rinsing. lot of salt is going to be in there because right. this is the first rinse of the very, very salty gans that okay. I'm pouring in. So if you imagine each one of the, uh, the, big, the big jars here are, I think, a half a gallon. Uh -huh. the, uh, the outside's three or so, and the other ones are probably a quarter gallon. Um, so between all of these, I had about, I think about 100 milliliters of GANs in each one. Uh -huh. So it's fairly salty still. And right. I let that to settle. And basically you want to have a clear water on top of the GANs. I then poured all of the salty rinse water into one big container mm -hmm. and collected all of the GANs on the bottom again. Right. The salty water, um, last night, in the middle of the night, I decided to go down my alley and just pour the salty first rinse water all over the alley. Smart. So I've begun to spread these materials around. And nice. um, that was an instant last night where I thought, I, I have to do this and uh -huh. I have to do it now. Um, so that's something that can be... Uh, uh, kind of like wrong. purifying your neighborhood, so to speak. Well, yeah, essentially, if, if cars drive across that and if people walk across that, they're going to track it around. They're going right. to bring it into their homes and right. the fields kind of um, can it's progress spread. in that way and expand. So Nice. Very cool. And then you're going to want to rinse many times. Containers. Oh, yeah. My goodness. I need to get yeah. glasses, glass jars everywhere. So, um, but we want to make sure we rinse many times. So let's talk about this a minute. So um, basically, when these settle... That's when you pour the water off and you pour it into maybe a couple big buckets or something, a five gallon bucket or whatever, what you have. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to refill them with tap water um, to rinse that GANS again and let it settle. Um, right. But each time you save that, you have a potentized water that has some saltiness in it, but you can use it to spray your neighborhood. You could use it maybe a little in your laundry. You could use it... Um, there's so many ways. Anything that you want to protect and keep safe in a way. Um, window sills was one that was expressed recently by Mr. Kesh uh, with the salty water to, um, you know, anything outside of your house. Let's say you live in a, um, in a condo or something like that. Uh -huh. um, you could take some of these materials and spray the outside of, uh, let's say you had a brick building. You can pour it on a gravel your window walkway. Sills. Pour it on your walkways, absolutely. Uh -huh. If it's raining in your environment, even better, because the rainwater will take that salt water and disperse it even further. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways that we can use that to kind of um, protect our environment. So essentially Setting the salt condition will, will trap that um, virus energy. It'll, it'll draw it into it. Okay. So um, as we do it around the neighborhood, um, there's many ways that we can and start the field. The salt water, as you save that, when you pour it off, are you reusing it in more GANS processes or? Uh, yeah, so in a way I am. In the first cycle of the rinse, um, so what I call the first rinse is when I put the first bit of fresh water in. Right. Uh, before that, everything is roughly at 15% salt because right. I've measured that out. Right. So as long as they stay at 15% salt, I know I can always put them back into the other GANS kits. Right. That I have around the house because they're also at that same salinity. Okay. Um, after I've done the first rinse, the first rinse is the only one where I'm going to dispose of that much because uh -huh. the other ones I actually want to keep. Um, 
so as we learn uh, through the process of the, uh, the protocol of the, the two different cups of life, there are different things that we can do with the salty waters that we collect from right. Kansas. So that's something that um, I don't want to explain overly so because it's, it's a lot of detail. Yep. But it's something that um, as we're going through these processes, each one of the steps that we get um, are as we go through the process, we have different options and yep. we want to keep as many of the materials that we create because there could be things that we can use them for. And I will say if somebody really, and I can put these links under the video as well, if somebody really wants to know all the details on this, they can listen to the Knowledge Seekers workshops that are the 319th, 320th, 321st, which was the night, was the, was the 21st, the Corona um, blueprint the I nine think hour it was 318 one. that was no uh because uh -uh, i was already in 319 it was after okay. 319 it might have it was either 320 or 321 um okay. but and then 322 323 like that whole batch are all about this you'll see here yeah. case studies you'll hear more details about the making of it more details about the using of it which a lot of which we can't really disclose here it wouldn't be appropriate for us to be talking it's just about a lot of it. details. there's a lot of things that, yep. that a lot of people will um in a way we need to discover them for ourselves exactly um so it's a bit of a bit of pointing in the direction and yes. then um, allowing for those who want to this is kind of it. giving an overview for people who are knowledge seekers or I know I have a lot of people in my following who've been part of the teachings and they just want to know how to do something so this is a really nice overview for them but to get more of this teaching it would be to go listen to those knowledge seekers workshops yeah. it is an investment of time but there's a lot of really good stuff in there yeah absolutely and I uh, I really appreciate that um, Everyone in the background of the of the family, the Kesh fan family, is is really doing a lot of work that many Tons. people aren't seeing. Yes, and um, I want to really um, call that out and, and really say thank you to everyone who's Absolutely. doing everything because it's not a one man show. It's Absolutely. not a Mr. Kesh show. It's amazing yeah. how many people are around the world doing this. Stuff. Right. And the country of Iran is stepping up and they're using oh the God. technology. Yeah. And so we have a lot of really, really cool things going on. And this is part of the change, what I call in this shift of the ages of tools for health, for healthy living coming forward. Um, when we've had in the old system, we've had um, the whole um, pharmaceutical system, which has been here, take this, take this forever. And you're and people don't really get well but this is we're looking at the birthing of new ways for us to get well and be well and stay well and i just want to honor these times we're in i want to honor all the awake people on the planet i want to honor the people that are following and doing these teachings and others um, we're just in a really great a great time on planet earth it was very exciting you know absolutely i've and, uh, i've noticed in the last week um a real shift in the energetic level of the planet. I don't know if that's been noticeable for you as well, yes, but this, since absolutely. about Monday, um, Sunday, Monday, somewhere around there, things shifted in a massive, massive way. Yes. Um, to the point where I was laughing hysterically out of nowhere. <laughs> things that didn't make sense. You know, the world is collapsing around us and yet uh, we feel fine. Um, yes. It's an interesting dynamic. So yes, let's I just think there's a. Up. I think it, what appears to be chaos, there's a rebirth going on. And I don't think it will ever be like it was before when no, we come out of no, this. No, we're not going back. And that's Which something that I'm very happy about. Yes, very exciting. Um, and thank you, to you for your oh, yeah. beautiful star seedish, you know, wisdom and your, what you've absorbed and you're being willing to share it. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, um, this is my filtered water station so to speak this is where i make all of my plasma water after uh, the cans has been rinsed uh, thoroughly to the point where it's no longer salty um, generally done just by tasting you don't have to pull out a fancy detecting meter or anything like that right but you'll know at a certain point you know maybe six yes. times seven times nine times that it's good that's me too i've always done it by taste and it's always about six or seven times yeah. So, so you know why what? is Actually, that? with the with the with the high percentage of the salt that we're using yeah. now, with the fifteen, um, you can sometimes get it down faster, which is interesting. Oh wow! I don't know why, but it, sometimes mm. I've noticed that um, if I have a very very uh, small amount of the GANs going into right. a larger amount, it can be maybe as few as two or three. Wow! So just so to be, why just is to be it constant? 
Okay, cool. Why is this one container cloudy? That's in the settling yeah, process? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this okay. is, um, I just poured new fresh water on the top. So cool. um, at, the, at the spigot level there, I have a plastic tube on the inside so that it's kind of drawing water a little bit further up from the tap nice. so that Got the bottom it. has a little bit of a gap. Got so it. I don't have the GANs going in. So you're the, siphoning it out of there. Yeah, so it's, it's collecting the, uh, the, the clear water above the GAN. Cool. Cool, cool. And so I think the next picture shows that after there it is. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, so you can see uh, you can see how how much nicer that looks. Gorgeous. And this is a glass container. Um, it has a plastic tubing and a plastic spigot. Um, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Nano coated wires. Nano coated the wires. Mystery yeah. and the magic. Um, so this is something that happened um, on one of my cups, um, more so than on others. And the reason for that was that I was originally using this with a battery. And I find when I'm using the battery that the, um, well, I guess all the processes speed up. So that's not always a good thing. Um, and we want to be cautious of, um, of jumping to the matter state too happily or too readily because we want to see something. Right. Um, but this caused a very interesting condition to occur within the jacket of the, the wire. So, um, through the process of the nano coating, um, or sorry, through the process of the GANS creation and this inter interaction between the, uh, the two sides of the connections, the nano coating started to build up in the jacketed wires. And so it's kind of hard to explain, uh, unless you've been around this technology before, how this could be possible. Right. Um, but essentially, you're creating a condition where the plastic of the jacket of the vinyl that's going around the, the copper is um, is releasing some of its bond uh, into the metal and the metal is collecting that copper um, or the nano coating rather onto its surface. So And so the fact that it's getting nano coated like that means it's becoming more of a superconductor, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the nano coating is a superconductor um, at room temperature and at room pressure which is the um, absolute breakthrough about this technology, which is uh, why it works. Nikolai, love your viewpoint here. <laughs> so this is just another uh, a picture that shows the, the other side of the connections. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the copper wire that's closest to us, you can see it's still very much copper. And the ones that are on the other side in the jacket are darker. Very cool. But a bit of cool. And so you think it, that, it, oh, go ahead. it only happens with the plastic around it, right? No, actually. Oh. So that's, uh, I was just going to get to that. The, okay. um, the, the reason that uh, one side of this setup has got nano coating on it and the other one does not, um, the, the wire that's closest to you is connected to the, the central column, the nano coated wire. Right. Okay. And the other two are connected to the matter state, zinc and copper. Gotcha. And so that's what's actually happening. So if you have your nano coated bridge, um, it's actually going to create the nano coating on the opposite side of the of the setup. So it's it's interesting. It, it occurs on the uh, on the on the plus side okay. of the wire. And that's the nano coated side, or no, not the nano coated side. Well, in this case, the uh, the zinc plate and the copper plate are connected together. And right. those are the those are what I'm calling the plus side. Right. That's what and, I thought. Yeah. And so that half of the the connect technically there's no battery here, but if there was, right. those ones would be going to the plus side of the battery. And wow. that's the side that I find that the uh, nano coating happens on. Wow. It does Mind eventually boggling. it will eventually jump across, but uh -huh. the um, in my case I have a copper wire between those two, and that condition is different in the in the non-insulated wire than it is in the insulated wire. So for, it, for the nano coating to continue across the jacket and across the uncoated bridge and down, we'll, we'll need another change in the environment. So there's gonna be a plasmatic shift that has to occur for that to, uh, to nano coat. Wow. So I don't know exactly how that will work. If it does, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> it always stays fun and exciting to me, this plasma technology, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so fun working with these fields and having these different experiences. It's like, yeah, wow. absolutely. Um, I will share one more thing, perhaps, and then we can we can okay. end it here. Yeah, is uh, just about how to use the material. 
Okay. Um, because that's actually very important in terms. It's all it's all going to be described in the in the wiki. Yeah. So when you go through that, you'll really uh, for those of us that are tuning in fresh. Yes. That'll be your, that'll be your go-to. But um, once you've made you your tell plasma us what water, you do instead of what yeah, somebody else. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'll start with. So when I be. once I'm done with my water, I have my um, my big gallon or my my four gallon glass jar with the with the plasma water in it. So we've done all these different cups. You know, we did the single cup of life, one yep. cup of life. Then we did the twin single cup of life. Then we did the second cup of life. Then we did the twin second cup of life. So are you mixing all these together or are they all separate? Uh, yes and no. So okay. all of the cup ones go together and all of the cup twos go together. Even Irregardless the cup of ones whether or not the they're cup twins, twins or not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One cup as long as they have zinc in them, they okay. still contain the energy field strength of the first cup of life. Okay. And when we move to the copper condition, then we want to keep everything in that condition. Okay. So those ones don't get mixed anymore, mm -hmm. but I collect all of my one cups together and all of mm -hmm. my two cups together. Yes. And then if you were going to use these, how would you use them? Yeah. So um, I'll tell you my routine. And, you know, once I've yeah, made my GANS waters, um, I have a, a number of spray bottles around the house, mm -hmm. uh, one in my vehicle, one by the, by the door when I walk in. And, uh, and then I have two in the bathroom. And this is all so, for the water that's been rinsed, basically. This is all the rinsed water, yeah. Okay. That's the clear plasma water, no longer with salt. Okay. Um, with a little bit of the amino acids put back in. Okay. So that we keep that connection. But then what I'll do is uh, in the morning, I'll have, my sh I'll have my shower. The amino acids are put back into the bottle with the GANs in it, right? The GAN. Yes, your base into the bottle. container that's okay, making container. your plasma okay. water. Okay. So in my case, it was that very big glass uh, jar Got it. that was okay. cloudy, then turned clear. I right. put in a couple of scoops on the top of just the aminos, yeah, and um, and those uh, those then get that become condition. part of that process. Okay. Yeah, and then as we take the water down, you know, maybe I get halfway down to the to the bottom of my big jug, and I'll fill that back up again with new fresh right. water. But so what I'll do in my morning routine is um, I'll have my shower, I'll dry myself off. And then I'll grab the plasma water from the first cup of life in a spray bottle and I'll spray myself head to toe mm -hmm. while I'm, you know, standing in the bathroom, you know, all my arms and legs and everything mm -hmm. else. Um, do a little happy dance, you know, move around a bit, get some, get some of the air to, to, to dry, dry to off, to uh -huh. dry off a bit. And then I'll take the second spray bottle. And this is from the second cup of life. It's okay. again, washed of its salt. So it's just the clear water. Again, I put the amino acids in. It's in a different container right. so that it, it does its process. Um, and then I spray myself below the lungs. Okay. So we don't want to put the cup of life number two on our head. So nothing around here and nothing on our lungs because that's actually not what that cup of life um, affects. It's to do with our red muscle tissues and our hands and the rest of our body. So I spray myself with the second cup of life from below the, the chest, so mm -hmm. you know, around the diaphragm and down. I spray my arms, I spray my legs, all the way down to my toes. And again, you know, a little, little dance, <laughs> move around. And that's my, my morning routine. Um, it's pretty simple. And when I leave the house, and if I come back to the house, I mean, now with the quarantine going on, we may not be able to, but for those who, uh, who still can, um, what my process is, I spray myself from head to toe before I leave the house. And when I come back into the house, with the first cup of life. And that GANS water um, will essentially create a bubble around my entire body. And it's a very, very weak plasmatic field that has the conditions of zinc and copper. And those ones are ones that we can use to feed our own body. And so the way that I've described this is what we're doing, to the, what we're doing when we interact with the virus is we're offering it a platform to work with us. We're not trying to get rid of it. We're not trying to delete the virus. We're not trying to kill it. We're actually trying to use the energy that it's provided to help assist us and help move that energy to a position where it's no longer harmful for us. And it's not going to uh, cause the virus any harm itself either. That's a very so, peaceful way to live. That's what this is all about. It's about right. community living with the universal environment, which is yes, energy packets. I love that. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a negative, it's not a positive, it's just, a, it's just an interaction that we're having yes. on a global scale right now. I love it. So um, I, I spray my chest front and back, 
And oftentimes when I, when I come home from the grocery store, um, before I go into my house, I'll grab the spray bottle, spray the outside of the bags. Um, and then again, inside, take everything out, spray everything again, leave it on the counter, let it dry into the fridge, um, nice. take off the wrappings and whatever, and, and then mm -hmm. you're good to go. Nice. Um, and then do you consume any of your water? Yeah, that's nice. You're creating yeah, a totally. bubble of, of safety, of vitality, of energetic protection, really. In it, in it sounds, it sounds kind of funny and kind of woo woo and all the rest, but when you actually apply the two Gans waters in conjunction on your body, uh -huh. something very amazing happens. Nice. Um, how I can explain it is the, the copper Gans that you sprayed on the lower half of your body mm -hmm. is uh, a different condition than the one that you sprayed on the entirety of your body. Mm -hmm. And because you've sprayed uh, half of your body with a different field strength, Say the, I. I'm sorry? Say I, because I've Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I've, yeah. As I've sprayed, sorry, as I've sprayed the, uh, the Gans waters of the second cup of life onto my body, I find that the, the two interact in a way that feeds my physicality. Mm. So I'm not hungry in the morning after mm. I do this routine. Wow. I'll wake up in the morning, and I'm hungry. Immediately, I want a coffee. I want something to eat, a little nibble or water. I have my shower. I come out. I'm not hungry for about an hour immediately. So there's an energy exchange that's happening in that environment and nice. it's bringing a balance to my uh, emotional state as well as to the physicality, nice. um, which allows for a little bit of a, a little distancing from that, that morning. Oh no, I've got to face the world. You know, I get my little routine to, to collect myself and, um, and that's how oh. I use it. Cool. And do you consume any of it? Oh yeah. Sorry. I also drink the water of it. Yeah. And that's and how, a, a, a process out of, that I... Out of both cups or out of... Only the first cup. Only the first one. Only the one with the zinc. We don't want and to ingest... The, yes, cup. unless I had a specific stage of the virus in its condition, uh, that's when I would take the secondary cup of life. Cool. Because it can be used as an antibiotic, mm -hmm. but that's something I don't want to specifically get into because there's a lot more understanding that is um, wrapped around. Got it. And so, wow, what a bunch of cool, cool, cool information you've shared with us today, Nikolai. I mean, this is like having a class in your living room. I mean, somebody could actually take this video, they could stop at different places, and they could actually build their own setup, which is right. Isn't that what we're encouraging people to do anyway? Absolutely, Gary. That's the whole point is to uh, share this knowledge with everyone that we can freely uh, to those who are willing to uh, do the work and to search it out, uh, they'll be the ones that find us. And um, that's what's important. We don't want to spend any energy on um, trying to convince anybody. We're not trying to sell this. Um, in fact, all of the kits that I have here, I'm giving to my community. Um, I'm giving those freely, not because um, there's any aspect to this that has to be that way, but I feel very strongly that this technology is to be given away and um, that that will further progress through the uh, different communities. Because if I'm doing the same thing here, and if you're doing the same thing where you are, Carrie, and we have many of these different oases all over the planet, all working in their own correct nature and conduct, um, that's what's really gonna bring the change. That's really true, absolutely. So um, it's really important. I mean, this has been given in a way and taught in a way for all of us to be able to do it at home in our communities. And that's what's really super important. I, I share it in my little village where I am. And um, I know I'll have people asking me, oh, well, can somebody ship it to me? And um, I don't think that that's what's going on right now. What I'd say is get together, like the Hopi prophecy says, look and see who is in the river with you and and say yes we can do it together so look around find somebody in your community who's maybe a little more technical than you are if you need help and just sit and watch the video go to the kf wiki what is that wiki address again nikolai yeah for uh the english language speakers which is uh, probably a majority of your audience mm -hmm. it's yeah. uh, en so the letter en dot kf wiki dot org and on the right-hand side of the page, you're going to see two links. One says coronavirus, uh, one cup, one life, and second cup of life. And uh, you'll, you'll click on those. You'll get the, uh, the full description. I'm sure Carrie will link those links in the description below. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's got a whole full page. It's a lot of information there. 
Um, I would recommend to all those people to print those documents out. You can um, on the website of the P on the um, on the web page rather in your browser you can go to print as a PDF and you can either save the document on your computer or on your cell phone um, as a PDF or you can print it out. And I highly recommend people do that for the first cup of life and the second cup of life. The, um, they have very specific instructions on how to use them, when to use them. And uh, if we are in an emergency situation, it's really good to have those uh, hard copies printed out, nice and safe, where uh, we can refer to them as we need. Very good, very, very good input. I'm actually gonna do that here. I'm just gonna download it and then I'm gonna put it on a flash drive and I'm gonna take it to the little print shop in our town and I'm gonna get it printed out. Just be nice to have. Oh, perfect. And I do believe that I did hear Mr. Kesh, it might've been on the 319th, that it was in the early phases when he started talking about this, that this is the formula that they used um, to help the pigs get well from the African swine flu in mm -hmm. China last year, which was really a huge report because they hadn't even had those kind of successes. So I think this kind of anecdotal evidence is really helpful as well. Uh, we want everybody to be well, to be healthy, to be vital, to be following their hearts, to be living as peaceful members of this global community while we live through this great change, which is the shift of the ages. And new things are coming. We know they are. Take care of yourselves, your community, your loved ones. And let us remember to breathe, smile, laugh, and love. And we are here to change the world and we're not alone. So Nikolai, thank you for sharing your gifts with us today. And I appreciate your starseed mind and your practical mind. Um, it's really lovely to be here with you. And um, We'll talk again soon. Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to, to talk with you today and to share all of the, uh, the wonderful teachings of uh, our lovely Mr. Kesh and uh, all of the other wonderful people around this planet doing uh, all they can to bring us through these times. And, Absolutely. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, to anyone out there who would like to uh, become a knowledge seeker on their own, I highly, highly recommend doing so awesome change in my life after that occurred and um, there's plenty of information at uh, keshe.foundation for you guys to look up and uh, find some more intel there absolutely and then the knowledge seekers workshops which are there's thousands literally thousands of hours oh, of yeah. on youtube they're just called knowledge seekers workshops or uh kfssi cash foundation spaceship institute is the name of the youtube channel and um, there's also public yeah. teaching. And I think we'll put the links for that. Absolutely. In a way that people can find an easy, yes. easy act. Right access. on. And um, yeah, so otherwise, thank you very much. And I just want to urge everyone that this is a science that anyone can do, anyone can learn this. It just takes some practice and uh, some dedication and uh, come from your heart, and everything will be great. And um, one last thing I'll leave you guys with is if. Uh, if this resonates and uh, if it feels like something that you're called to do that's, um, that's, that's important at this time, I would ask that uh, just like we uh, work with the virus, we spread it in a positive way to those around us uh, so that they can do the same. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, absolutely. It's a fantastic alchemy, really, when you start doing this and having GANs being made in your house. When I was in school, they taught us in science class space was empty well we know space is not empty mm -hmm. it's this living field and it's where we draw the plasma from and help turn it into these gan the ganses and the nano coated copper and all these different things just um it's a really fun alchemy a really great thing to this is like i think everybody should learn this in elementary school but it's really great oh um, yeah Science. We'll get there. Put in your life. Yes, we will. We're headed that direction. Well, this, this is elementary school for us. We're just, uh, we're just jumping in as uh, older children. So It no is. Problem. Yep. Okay. Much love. Many blessings to all. Um, if you like what you're hearing here, be sure and click subscribe. And you can click the little bell to be notified of the videos, the, the new ones that come up right under the YouTube channel. And share this with a few of your friends and grow our community. This is how we build our global community here and help each other learn and grow. Okay, breathe, smile, and love. And see you all soon. Ciao.
answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come, come on everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see it when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one Hear now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one And we can make a difference Yeah, we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are Oh now child, please don't frown You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far I am a 21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Century superhuman now, now, now is the time. Now, now, now is the time.